My name is Don Rice. I was born January 3rd, 1928 in Omaha, Nebraska at the Emanuel Hospital. Hi, I'm Adrian. I was Adrian Rice and I was born in Omaha also on May 6th, 1933 at the Clarkson Hospital. Now let me hear about your parents. Well, my parents were Joe and Ruth Rice. Uh, they were great people. Uh, we were lucky. We had wonderful parents. Wonderful, wonderful parents. parents. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how they met because Dad was born in Sioux City, Iowa. Uh, unfortunately, he lost both of his parents within a week when uh, he was just a teenager. So uh, it was he had. A, a sister Tilly and a brother Sam and uh, they had to pretty much go out on on their own for quite some time. Uh, my mom was born in Chicago and uh, one of six. One of six kids and fortunately uh, we were able to spend a lot of time during our lives with mom's parents uh, Jacob and Fanny Green and uh, Grandma Green uh, died fairly young, was she? I don't remember, I but don't remember. Grandpa Green lived to about 102, I think. We celebrated his 100th birthday. In fact, he lived in Omaha. He for lived a, in Omaha. Until he was 100, and then he moved back to Chicago, as a matter right. of fact. He was at the Dr. Share home in Omaha for several years. So that's, that's, uh, that's Dad and Mom, and uh, Adrian and I have talked about it. We're not really sure how they met, but Dad was still uh, in Sioux City, and Mom was in Chicago. And uh, I remember when Dad used to go to see Mom uh, driving from Omaha to Chicago. It takes several days, uh, <laughs> just because of the roads and everything else. We're talking about uh, when did they get married? Uh, a long time ago. No, I mean. <laughs> I mean, this was this was in the dark ages when they, when they were courting, and uh, but and and I know that the Chicago family, because mother had uh, had five other brothers and sisters, um, who all stayed in the Chicago area. They didn't want mom to leave. They didn't want to lose their sister. But uh, dad prevailed, and uh, when they got married, they moved back to Omaha. Do you have anything to add? To no, that? they were married on December 26th, but I don't remember the year. Could it have been? Well, they were all they were going to celebrate their 70th wedding anniversary just prior to when Dad passed away. What so they mean? were married for 69 years. Dad uh, passed away in 93, 1993. 1993. How did your dad happen to come to Omaha from Sioux City? I I think that he was selling. Uh, like confectionaries and uh, uh, candies and stuff to uh, uh, to uh, grocery stores and smaller shops like that. But his brother Sam worked for Cudahy in Omaha, and my guess is that Sam got Dad to come to Omaha because he was there. And uh, and I don't know how their sister Tilly, how she ended up in Omaha. I, I have no I, clue. I, I just don't know. I know she did end up in Omaha because she ended up actually uh, working uh, with uh, Dad and Sam at, at Glandelac. At their company, yeah. They were all working together, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. Now, what was your dad's background as far as education was concerned? Well, this is interesting. He started to go to the University of Chicago but he was so anxious to see his brother Sam finish school that he quit school and went to work uh, so, that, uh, so that his brother Sam could, could finish because his, his brother Sam was in, going to be a graduate chemist and they both couldn't stay in school at the same time so dad, after I think a year at the University of Chicago, uh, stopped and went on the road. And your uncle did finish school? Finished school, went to work for Cudahy, which uh, in a sense is how the whole uh, business of, their, of, the, of the Glandelac got started. Um, Dad, uh, Dad's brother Sam Rice was a chemist at Cudahy and befriended a veterinarian who also worked for Cudahy. 
and uh, through them uh, Sam introduced my dad to the vet and the vet had ideas at the time that he could make a feed, uh, a hog feed I think it was, and uh, dad who knew nothing about farming or agriculture or anything, but he was a terrific salesman, said well if you can make the feed I can sell it. And uh, they got together and actually on a garage floor uh, put this feed together over a weekend and on Monday morning dad would pile the feed in his car and he would go out on the road and sell the feed to farmers. And he'd come back as soon as he was out and they'd make another batch. And one thing led to another and that was actually the start of Glandelac and people often say, where'd they get that name? And uh, dad used to tell me that I guess they used lactose from the glands of a, I guess a cow um, in making this feed. So they took the name gland and just put a zero in, in the middle, gland O, lac, and that's how, that's how that started. I didn't even know that. Yeah. <laughs> you learned something new through this. Yeah. What kind of things did they manufacture as far as feed was concerned? Well, they started <laughs> manufacturing feed, but that didn't last real long because at, one, at some point they decided to get more into the poultry end of the business and Glandelac actually ended up being specializing primarily in uh, vaccines and antibiotics and, and remedies for the poultry industry which at that time was very very large in the Midwest. Every farmer, every farmer's wife had chickens uh, they, they laid eggs either for them to eat or, for the, or to sell to the local grocery store. And so, fu uh, fo so uh, chickens and turkeys in the Midwest were a huge business. And so that's how they went to that as a specialty. Hired salesmen, started a plant in, South, in North Omaha. And uh, as business grew, they moved the plant to South Omaha. And they had a terrible fire. I remember when that happened and uh, they had to start from scratch again and so they built a building on 19th and Leavenworth uh, which, which was the home of Glandelac for many many years. As a kid I remember when people would ask me what my dad did I kept saying they used to make medicines for sick chickens that's all I knew about the business so Don has given you the real part I just thought it was for sick chickens and that was it. Well, I used, to, I used to go down and, and, and help Dad occasionally, and, and uh, of course I ended up being in the business in 1950, shortly after I graduated from college. And uh, I think they built that building in around 1930, in the 30s. The one on Leavenworth? Yeah. 1818 Leavenworth? Yeah, 1818 Leavenworth. I think, I think they built it in the 30s, I <laughs> and uh, I came in the business in the, in 1950 and we ended up selling the business in a, like 1968 or 69 and uh, that was an interesting story uh, by that time we were we had a we had a, a wonderful business we were selling internationally and uh, we were approached by SIBA which was a giant international drug firm who wanted to get into the animal field and they didn't want to start from scratch they wanted to buy an existing business and they, they came to us and I, I'll never forget it my dad was so concerned about well, what are you guys going to do because I was in the business and so were two of my cousins Sam's boys uh, Bud and, and Dave and <clears throat> I, my feeling was at that time that uh, you know, you've worked hard all your life for this, and you've got to get a chance to retire, and we're still young enough to, we can find, we can find work, whatever. And so they did finally sell the business, and uh, actually I stayed on for a couple years, but then they wanted to take the business to the East Coast, and I wanted to stay in Omaha. So, and Dad was enjoying retirement, and uh, that was, that was primary for, for, my, not only my thinking, but my cousin's thinking, because we were all young enough to, to do other things. Adrian, what were things like in your home while your dad was in the business, growing up? Oh, we had such a great home life. I had this wonderful brother 
is sitting here, who teased the life out of me. He was, <laughs> I want to think it was with love, but he did tease me to death. So there were times when I was ready to kill him, but other than that, Don and I got along great. We had, a, we had a wonderful relationship, which I'm happy to say has continued through the years, and is certainly, as we've gotten older, the teasing has stopped, and now we're just playing good friends as well as brother and sister. But our home life, I would have to say, we were very fortunate. Mom and Dad were wonderful parents, and uh, I, don't, I can't remember things going on in the house that were ever anything. I'm sure there were incidents, because there always are, but we had, I would say, a very happy home life and uh, one that was very special, I would say. Friday yeah. night dinner, every Friday, every Friday night. night. That's right. I want to hear about those dinners. <laughs> well, they were great. You, yes. can, you can talk well, about those dinners. I, can't, I just know that we had dinner, as Don was saying, every Friday night, and uh, was always us, and sometimes there were others too, as oh, I recall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That and, and that continued after we were married. Oh, yeah. And, uh, until we all, and, and, until, until we all left. Until we all left, because even with our kids, you said they still talk about going to Grandma and Grandpa Ruth's, uh, Grandma and Joe and Grandma Ruth's for Friday night yeah, dinner. Yeah. And I remember that on, on the holidays, like uh, uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, uh, we, uh, Mom used to always call out at, uh, off at air base. And we also always had a few Jewish soldiers that's right. Or air people, she wanted to, she wanted at the, at the house for the holidays. In fact, one of them, now that you, I think of it, one of the first was Sal Parso. He was stationed, I think, at SAC. Oh, really? Yes, know. and she had him. I'll never forget. She had him for dinner. That's before he met Lee Jane. That's when he was just a serviceman. And Mom always used to like to have a few service men over in the house for the holidays. I can still picture sitting around the table in the dining room. We had a large dining room, and uh, we would all sit around the table all the time. Gee, we were lucky, as I think about it, because we did that for as long yeah. as we were all in, in Omaha, as a matter of fact. As Those long were as great days, wonderful yeah. days. We were very fortunate. Tell me about the home you lived in. Well, we started. Where well, we started no, I started before, I, before you were born. I was I w when I was born they lived on a they lived in an apartment on about thirty second or third in California, um, in the Creighton area. Uh, but then, as a as I, I as far back as I can remember, we lived in Florence on about twenty eighth and Titus, uh, which was in a very very modest little bungalow. Actually, that was before me. Yeah, that was before you. <laughs> Uh, in a modest little, and I start actually. I started uh, <clears throat> kindergarten at, uh, at at school a few blocks from from our house. But uh, shortly, I mean, the next thing I remember, we moved to uh, to William Street. To William Street. Forty two sixteen. Forty two sixteen William Street. Forty-two, 16, William Street I remember. <laughs> uh, right near the county hospital there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we both went to Beale School. We both went to Beale School for a while. And you? at that time, we went, when we went to Beale School, the only thing around Beale School, it was all farmland pretty much, except for Gratz. <laughs> Gratz was, was across from Beale School, remember that? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And then when I was, in fact, when I was still at Beale School, I can remember walking once in a while with Joanne Levy to Bethel when we were going to Hebrew School. And that was a long walk from Beale School yes, to Bethel, and that was when Bethel was at 49th and Farnham. And then uh, when I was in fifth grade, I think it was, we moved to 56th and Webster. And I finished school at Dundee and then went on to Central. But as a kid, I remember our lives on William Street. You used to play hockey there. Well, what, hockey. What, what, I, what I remember <laughs> about the folks that most affected my life and, and to this day, is that they, somebody came out at Beale School and said they were gonna have an open house and was anybody interested in playing a musical instrument? And I said to mom, you know, I, I think I would like to play the clarinet. I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> but she said, fine, we'll go. So we went over to Beale's school and I got a clarinet. I was like a, I was so excited, and I took a few lessons. And uh, I, 
I'm not going to go into the rest of the story, but it was it was the start of, of a musical career that I've had for 60, over 60 years. I know I, I've been a member of the Omaha Musicians Association for about 65 years, and but I, it wouldn't have happened unless the folks were, unless the folks encouraged me, and they did, and I, I'll, I'll, they changed my life. Nobody did that for me. <laughs> I can't play any instrument. I took piano lessons for a while that went nowhere, and that was the no, end they, of my, <laughs> my musical career. Uh, Adrian, when you started high school, you went to Central? Right. Tell me about those times. Oh, those were great times. Those were great times. Yes, I went to Central for all four years, and uh, it was a long way from home. I can remember taking streetcars and buses and when we couldn't get a ride. Uh, if, some, if we knew someone that was old enough to drive, then that helped a great deal. Uh, Central was a wonderful place in those days. I'm assuming it still is. I don't know. But uh, it was across the street from the Jewish Community Center. And after school, every single day after school, all the Jewish kids went over to the Jewish Community Center. And it was a wonderful meeting place. We had a lot of fun there. It's where a lot of friendships developed and, and people got together. And that's where the dating all started. And it was, it was, our lives there were terrific. And Central was a wonderful school then, and I'm assuming it still is. Uh, got a good education there and uh, met some terrific people. What I remember about Central is that it was, uh, it was the education-wise, the best I've ever had. I, enjoy, I enjoyed my time at Central even more than at the university I, yeah. because it was, there were so many great friends that, that we all made and we all and still maintain those friendships, right. thank God, uh, to this day. And uh, I remember the Jewish Community Center and. Paul Verrett. Uh, I remember if if I would sit in there after school, and some one of the gals would come in, a cute gal or something, I'd say, "Come on, sit on my lap." <laughs> Paul Verrett would come rushing out of his his <laughs> office. None of that in here. <laughs> How times have changed. But but Central was fabulous school. Yes, it was. Who are some of the friends that you have today that you had at Central? Well, Stan Lipsy. Uh, he and I grew up together. Um, uh, Jean Lipsy Rosenblum, we were like brother and sister. Uh, who else do I still, well, Irv Malishak, who's a dear, dear friend, uh, I think he might have graduated by the time I, I, by the time I was in, in high school. But uh, I don't know, I can't, a lot of them, a lot of them unfortunately aren't here anymore, but uh, I, I still maintain friendships with a lot of people in Omaha uh, that I went to school with. How about you, Adrian? I was just, while you were talking to Don, I was trying to think of that. Um, we were talking about the Blacker family. Marty Blacker and I are still very close. The Blackers and our family. Uh, we, oh, we used to get to dinner almost every Sunday night with mm -hmm. the Blackers. And uh, we, so they were always dear friends. And Marty and I have remained dear friends to this day. Now he lives in Houston and I'm in Santa Monica, but we still correspond and, and still talk to each other. How about the Lensmans? Uh, yeah, they, they were all part of that too. Uh, and Judy Theodore was a friend of mine and Rita Brick was a friend of mine. In fact, we were known as the Big Four. That was Lois, Lensman, Rita Brick, Judy Theodore, and I was the one of them. And we were the Big Four. And those were the ones that... I know Dad was Dad was very friendly also with Mo Linsman, who had a the wardrobe the wardrobe which was down on about Fourteenth uh, and Farnham in the Paxton Hotel in the, in the well right next up from door. the Paxton yeah. Hotel next door to the Paxton right. Hotel and a uh, funny story uh, Mo loved it Mo loved to gamble and not loved to gamble but he he liked to he liked to go to the horse races so one day. Uh, Dad and Mo were going to go to the horse races, and they used to sell these sheets where they give the odds. and And the, it so happens that the day they went to the horse races, the name of the sheet was Mo and Joe at the races. <laughs> <laughs> and this, they did this one. They didn't know anything about it. They picked this thing up and it says Mo and Joe at the races with my dad and Mo. And <laughs> That's cute. 
and we were going, and they used that as their as the sheet where they were going to do their bedding. <laughs> Adrian, you mentioned you're the four that you ran around, well, including you. Are you still in close contact? Uh, with occasionally, not as close as I was for many years because we're all scattered now. We all live in different cities. But we do keep in touch on an irregular. Actually, Judy has a place down here and talked to her a couple of weeks ago. Well, we were what about Lois? Don't you, aren't you in touch with Lois? Uh, only on occasion, yeah. Uh, Rita passed away several years ago. So, um, and as I say, that was, we were, we were the big four, but uh, we, so I still talk to them occasionally. Tell me a little bit about your dad's partner, his brother. Uncle Sam Rice uh, was a brilliant, brilliant man. He, he uh, I mean, when I say chemist, he ended up being a formulator of some of the most successful products that Glandelac ever produced. And uh, he was a wonderful man, he was a great father, and uh, he was a business partner. Actually, I was, you know, he, I was in business with him for almost 20 years. Uh, he was a wonderful guy, and uh, he was very close to Dad. The, the, the family was very, very close-knit. They would have been other, anyhow, but the fact that they had to more or less be on their own as so young, having lost their parents, Hi, just want to tell, show you this picture. This was a picture of Dad that was taken at his bar mitzvah in 1914. And uh, that was in Sioux City, Iowa. Don, tell me the relationship that your father and uncle had in the business. Well, it was, a, it was absolutely a perfect relationship because my Uncle Sam was a scientist, he was a chemist, he was, uh, that was his interest. My dad was a salesman, very, very extrovert and uh, knew how to handle people. He just had a wonderful way with people and he was a salesman. Uncle Sam was the inside guy, the, the producer and it worked out so beautifully because the third partner was Dr. Renwald who was who, who Sam introduced to Dad. And how that happened, um, that after Dr. Renwald and Dad were starting to get somewhat successful in Glandelac, uh, my Uncle Sam got laid off at Cudahy. And uh, they both, Doc Renwald and Dad looked at each other and said, we gotta have Sam in the business because, uh, well, they, he needed a job and they thought that he could add a lot to the growth of Glandelac which he certainly did. So the three of them, it was like almost typecast. Dad was the salesman, Uncle Sam was the producer of the remedies, and Doc Renoir was the vet who knew the kind of uh, diseases that these animals got and could go to Uncle Sam and help him prepare the formulas to make the medicines. So it was, it was an ideal relationship. And actually, it, it turned out to be an interesting thing because when I came into business and when my cousin Dave came into business, Dave was also uh, a chemist and uh, actually I think he might have got his uh, masters in, in chemistry. So he went right to work at the side of his dad and I knew nothing about that and didn't have much choice so I went <laughs> to work right at the side of my dad who was the you know, you hear about so many families where fathers and sons have problems, can't get along, or the son leaves the business. It was an unbelievably great experience I had. I, I just, I look forward to coming to work every day. I mean, Dad and I had a, had a ball together. So. Where did the sales go? You said they went all over the country? We had, we ended up having salespeople in about 25, about 30 states, but we also had uh, some business overseas. We did some international business and in fact I remember when we shipped internationally at those days you had to have someone who knew about international shipping. I'm, I'm, gone, I'm back in the in the 50s and 60s and Maury Lip from Omaha uh, was in that business and uh, anytime we had to make shipments overseas we had to get a hold of Maury and he had to come down and do the, do the shipping papers for us. But uh, we, had, we had salesmen in about 30 states, and we used to have an annual sales meeting, and they'd all come to Omaha. Uh, but 
as the business grew, so did the poultry industry, and it moved, it moved south. It moved uh, uh, into Arkansas and the southeastern states where they used to produce, instead of little farm chickens, uh, a million chickens uh, for broilers for, you know, that's when chickens were very, very hot as far as eating and so forth. So the business really moved a lot, our business moved a lot to the southeast part of the country, but we sold all over the country. And Don, didn't Dad, some of the salesmen that worked for Dad, you still are in contact with this company? I am, aren't you? I am. I just, in fact, I, I, just got a, I just got a letter from a guy who worked for us in Iowa from his wife. He passed away a number of years ago, but she sends me a, they're, they're, she's a devout Catholic. She sends me a Hanukkah card every year it's and such has. A of that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and tells me about her. And I just got a, a card from her this Hanukkah. She just turned ninety, okay. and uh, she me. said she said she still remembers Dad so well and what a great great boss he was to her husband. So I we still correspond now, only once a year, but I answer her every year and tell her what I'm doing and how things are coming. Oh, and I remember is when I even was I was at Central. Uh, occasionally, I would walk over. It's a long way from Central High School to 18th and Leavenworth, but I used to love to come and talk to Dad. If he wasn't real busy, I could come in and sit down and visit with him about what was going on and my my social life. <laughs> uh, but it was a great place to go. Dad was always wonderful about, uh, you know, having me stop in. That was fine. And I knew the people at the desk and some of the people that worked there. It was just, it was a great... They had a, they had a, uh, they had a radio show on a station called WAAW, which was a station in Omaha, yeah, okay. uh, that specialized in the farming community. And Dad had a weekly show and he would broadcast right from his office. Really? I didn't remember Yeah, he broadcast right from his office and just kind of talk to the farmers about our company and what we're doing. And it, it, it was a very popular show and uh, gave us a lot of business. And uh, that, I think he did that for a number of years. Really? Because I, I remember going in and, and listening. This is before I was even in the business. But I used to hear Dad broadcast. It was very exciting because he was on the radio. <laughs> While you were in high school, Adrian, did you work at the store at all? No, no. They didn't need me, and I wasn't talented in any of the areas that were there. Actually, when that, by the time they moved to 18th and Leavenworth, it was a large plant, and there really wouldn't have been any place for me to do anything. But I loved to go over there and use the phone and talk to some of the people and feel like I was part of the, of the crew. Yeah, it was a great place. I want to hear about your dad's activities aside from the business in the community? Well, I would say first and foremost, he was a philanthropist. He, yes, he his, I mean, everything about raising money for Jewish causes was incredibly important to him. Um, I'll never forget, we were sitting around a, a, a dinner table, and this would bug my mother, <laughs> but, but dad would tell us, certain people in the community he didn't want us to do business with because they weren't good givers and this used to really really bother him uh, but he, he cared so much about philanthropies and uh, uh, thankfully I hope a lot of that is rubbed off rubbed off on us but uh, but that was a passion of dad's and uh, other than that he loved to play golf he was an avid golfer uh, as the years progressed, my mom, being a fantastic bridge player, got him into playing bridge. And uh, he never, <laughs> he never quite got it. He played and everybody loved to play with him, but uh, he didn't get, he wasn't very good at bridge. And mom used to have to really and she bite, was. <laughs> bite her lip at, <laughs> at certain times. But it was so much fun to play with him, and I did because uh, I started playing bridge probably because of mom uh, way back in college. And I'm still but, kicking myself that I didn't because now everybody plays bridge and I don't know how. But dad, dad loved the game. He, 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 you had to love to play with him because he loved the game. But he wasn't a very good bridge player. But he did love bridge. Um, as he got older, he used to, uh, even after golf, he used to love to walk. Yes, he walked a lot. And uh, I know when they come out to California and spend time with us, um, he have to take his, his walk every day. 
but I would say his his passions in life, other than his family, which was number one, were, were community work. Um, federation. He, federation. He was president, president of the, of the federation. federation. He was mm -hmm. president of Bethel. Um, he was on every board. He was president of the uh, Dr. Sherholm. Uh, he started Jewish. that old timers too. That the old timers uh, group. He started the the old timers group down at the Jewish Community Jew. Center too. Oh, that's the other thing I should tell you. He loved to play volleyball, that's and right. he used to go over to the J and play volleyball. And he was by far the shortest guy on the team, but his nickname was Spiker, <laughs> <laughs> which is reserved obviously for the tallest guy. But he used to play in a game. And uh, when I got into the business, Dad was still playing, and he got me into going over the J about three noons a week. That's what, we didn't take lunch; we just went over and we played volleyball. And uh, and I got to I got to play with a lot of those old old time Henry Rikus, uh, Doctor Meyer Bieber. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh golly, I can't think of all the names, but Dad loved to play volleyball. And he was the, good. At the J. He was and, good for a long time. And that was when, when I first started going over there and Dad was playing, that's when Lee Grossman was, was the head of the athletic department. And then uh, eventually, uh, one of our, the best players we had was Lindy Paul. Did you know Lindy? You ought to interview him. Uh, Lindy Paul played. But anyhow, Dad, Dad loved to play volleyball, and, and, and he was very active at, at the J. Uh, got, me in, got me into it. He was president of a lot of the, a lot of Jewish organizations and things that went on in the city. He was extremely involved in everything. I want to hear more about your mother. Oh, she was great. <laughs> she was wonderful. She, uh, she wasn't active in the communities as much because Dad did so very much. But she was a wonderful homemaker, and she was an excellent bridge player, as Don was saying. Well, wait a minute, didn't didn't she wasn't. Didn't she participate and do some, got pretty high up in either Hadassah, or one of the local or Jewish, council or, or council, like I think she Sorry. was active for, for a couple years, very active. I don't remember that part, sorry. But she was always around, and that's the part I remember and, and I was so grateful for. I mean, I never had to go home to an empty house. Mom was always around, she was always there. My friends were always welcome, I was always, greeted with a smile and a kiss and a hug. Uh, I, I just feel that we had the kind of a family life that uh, would be a blessing for anybody. Well, I want to, I have to tell you one thing about the folks that I'll never forget, and, and it goes, it involves my music. Uh, after I started playing, uh, when I was very, very young, I was still in high school, and I had a chance one summer and I was, I don't know, 16, 17, I guess. I had a chance one summer to go on a USO tour with, with a band from Los Angeles, came to Omaha, and uh, I auditioned and got hired. And I went back and told my parents that I had a chance to be gone for several months on this USO tour. And I just had my fingers <laughs> crossed. And I, 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 to this day, I certainly wouldn't have done with my kids what my parents did with me. They, they let me go. And I'll never forget, my dad drove me down because we left from Hospice Music on uh, Douglas Street, uh, I don't know, 14th or 15th and Douglas. That's where the, we had, this band leader had all these long buses. And uh, dad took me down there and I, I was just so thankful, and when I look back at it, what parents would have d done that to their kids, you know, my age, uh, let them just go with a band they didn't know, but they had enough confidence in me, I guess, but I'll, nice. I'll never forget that as long as I live. And, and, and I, I also remember, which is totally credit to my parents, that when I was on the road then, it was during the times when marijuana was starting to be used. I mean, only musicians were known for that at the time, and it was certainly offered to me. And I was so appreciative of my parents and their trust in me to let me do what they did. Uh, 
I never touch this stuff, and uh, and it's only because of, of my respect for my folks. That's very nice. That's very nice. And I'm remembering now that you're going back to when we were younger. We used to spend the summers. This was when I was quite young, because as I got older, I used to go to camp in Wisconsin every summer. But when we were younger, Mom would take us. Well, it, you too. We would go to Chicago, and Mom would get us a place, an apartment or something, and we would stay there. We would stay there on the south side, right near Mom's parents, Grandma and Grandpa Green, and we would walk, to, and that's where Aunt B.G. lived. Mother's other sisters lived close by, two of her other sisters, and we would spend the summers and, and in Chicago. And uh, in fact, I was kidding with Don because we used to have to take an elevator to the apartment that we were staying in. And Don used to get in the elevator and start pushing all the buttons, the different floors, until we eventually got stuck between two floors. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and it took, I don't remember what it took. I just remember standing in the corner, hiding behind Mother, crying. And I just want you to know, to this day, I will not get into an elevator that's operated by just people, and if I do, I have to be standing next to somebody because <laughs> I'm scared to death they're going to get stuck between the floors. Another thing about that, <laughs> the trips, uh, the one year, the apartment that mom, that we stayed in, we, dad was not with us, he was on the road. I mean, he, that's one of the reasons mom took us because dad was traveling for Glanelec, and at this time, the business was growing, he was on the road most of the time. Anyhow, this one apartment she got us was also, a lot of the Chicago White Sox players lived in that apartment. And I was a young boy and a baseball nut and all that, and I'll never forget, I would, they, I would see these players as they were getting ready, either coming back from uh, the White Comiskey Park or going, and they were so nice and they would toss a ball to me, and th that's when I was very young. To this day, I am a Chicago <laughs> White, White Sox, Sox fan. <laughs> just because of that. Okay, and to this day I won't go in an elevator because of you. <laughs> uh, Don, you went to the University of Nebraska, you said. I did. And Adrian, where did you go? I went to the University of Wisconsin for one whole year, and then I was such an old, sophisticated lady that that was enough for me, so I had to come back to Omaha, and that's when I got married. <laughs> Tell me about your year at Wisconsin. It was cold. <laughs> the same snow that was in Omaha was also up there in Madison. Um, it was okay. I didn't love it. Uh, I didn't get that involved because at that point I was involved with Omaha and my friends and I had been dating and I really just wanted to get back home, which is what I did. So I don't have much to say about my education. Did you go to Wisconsin with anyone from Omaha? Um, not that I remember. No, I don't think so, as a matter of fact. I wonder why you went. Well, I, I know why, exactly why I went there. I chose it because my summers I had spent at camps in Wisconsin oh. for many, many years. And uh, I was always up in northern Wisconsin. And a lot of the counselors at these camps were from the University of Wisconsin. And I just sort of assumed that then that's where I should go. And so I did for my one year. <laughs> Tell me about your life today. Oh, I have a great life today. I really do. I love, I moved to Santa Monica 30 years ago, 30 years ago and uh, I rented a place. At that time, two of my children were grown and they were on their own and I had a little one with me. And uh, Andy was just eight at the time. And we moved out here. Couldn't find a place to live because in Santa Monica you couldn't find an apartment where they would take children. So I literally walked my way from part of LA from the 405 freeway west up and down streets to find a place to live. Finally found a place in Santa Monica and I said do you take children? And they said yes if they're at least 10. I said I'll be darn he's going to be 10 next week which he was eight. <laughs> and They rented it to me. I rented it for 15 years and then I bought it after 15 years after that and I've now owned it for I've been in the same place now for 30 years. But when I moved out here, um, I was very fortunate. I needed a job. I had to go to work. I had been working in Omaha for Norman Rips, who had an insurance company. And he was wonderful to me. 
and I worked for him, not knowing anything about insurance, but he said, you'll learn, and he sent me to a school, and I learned, and I worked for him for several years, and when I moved to uh, California, he gave me some wonderful references, and I also knew other people there, in fact, the Denenbergs, who had a very dear friend in L.A. by the name of Mel Sherman, and uh, they contacted Mel and told them that this friend of theirs, being me, was going to be moving out there, and did he know of anybody that might need someone to go to work? So when I came out, I had an interview with Mel, and he hired me, and I worked for Mel and then for his sons until I retired. So I worked all those many, many years, and it was always for the Sherman family, either Mel or his boys. So, and that's how I ended up and still am in California, where I love it. And Don, tell me about your life today. My life today is, is good. Uh, no complaints. Uh, I still am very active in music. I work two or three nights a week. Uh, do a few concerts a year. Uh, fortunately, knock on wood, I'm still playing tennis every day. And... And he's played good. tennis in the morning, and I come home and maybe practice for a little while with my saxophone, and then I usually walk about seven miles every afternoon, and I try to do that about five days a week. So, uh, so far, so good. He I keeps in good it. shape. He keeps in good I, shape. I, I must say, I love it here. I, I, I love Omaha. I, I love going back. I have kids and grandkids, and I make it a point to get back every year. But uh, I do love. I, I love the desert. Like being here. I agree with Don on one thing. Omaha was a fabulous place to grow up. Sure it was, was a wonderful place to live. I still also love going back and do try to go back at least once a year also to see my children and uh, I get a, a big kick out of doing that. But one of the reasons we love Omaha so much is because of our folks. Okay. Absolutely. I guess it's time to, we're closing this down now. I just want to tell my children, Nancy, Kenny, Andy, how very, very much I love them, how thrilled I am that we spend time together. And when we don't have time together, we do talk on the phone. I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but at least once a day. And to my darling grandchildren, to Rachel, to Caitlin, to Cassidy, how fortunate I feel to have all of you as part of my life. And if there are any more along the way, that's fine, too. They'll be welcome and, and be happy for that, too. Uh, I love you all. I'm thrilled that we get to spend the time that we do together. And I hope that you, too, will feel the closeness that with each other and with me that I feel with all of you. I love you very, very much. Okay, this is, this is a wrap. <laughs> uh, well, to Jim... Wendy, Tom, Hal, anyhow, what I want to tell all you kids is how much I love you all, how much you mean to me, how much our association, our getting together, obviously not often enough, but when we do, is such a pleasure for me. Jim, Wendy, David, Tom, Jean, Josh, Matt, Ben, Jake, <laughs> I, I remember everybody, uh, Dana, Jamie, Kyle, uh, I love you all very, very much, and you're in my hearts, you're in my thoughts all the time. We're very lucky, we both are. of us. We've got wonderful families, we've got kids that are terrific. And we had and great, great parents. parents. Yeah, we've been very, very fortunate. And we thank you. <laughs>